welcome to Tuesday segment and today we are focused on increasing access and opportunity. I'm the Director of Counseling and Disability Services here at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute. 2020 is the 30th anniversary for the Americans with Disabilities Act and it's the 75th uh, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. So we want to focus on increasing access and opportunity for people with dis disabilities. So why? Why support people with disabilities? Let's learn a little bit more about that. information as you notice in the video the what can you do campaign is the campaign for disability employment with our what's next series we really want to focus on employment um, resumes interview skills and we truly believe that uh, the campaign for disability important employment is important along with all of those other aspects People who support family members, mentors, and others can really dramatically affect the impact of how um, the success of young people, including people with disabilities, to achieve at school work. So if you're not familiar with how the ADA uh, came about, it really was a part of the civil rights movement. You can see um, the picture there with um, folks in some wheelchairs with some signs. They are protesting. The first one is in um, San Francisco, sorry, San Francisco. And the um, second picture on the right is the Capitol crawl, which really preemptively um, was bef before the ADA. So we started off with some civil rights movements and right before the ADA came into play and it was passed by law, there was a capital crawl. These are people who, uh, with disabilities who got out of their wheelchairs, um, took off their crutches and they crawled up the United States Capitol stairs because there was no other way that they could enter the building. So they made, um, a, a profound statement by saying they could not access the things that other people could and had the rights to, and they showed that in a physical way with the Capitol crawl. So the ADA, or the Americans with Disabilities Act, was signed into law on July 26, 1990, again, 30 years from, from uh, this year. And it was signed by President George H.W. Bush. The law is landmark in civil rights legislation. It works to really increase the inclusion of people with disabilities in all aspects of life, including employment. So instead of being excluded for, from opportunities, the Americans with Disabilities Act gained people access to places and public services that were not possible before, just as you witnessed in the uh, Capitol crawl with um, the protests that happened prior to the ADA. So I mentioned earlier that National Disability Employment Awareness Month is actually in October. So we're celebrating the 75th year through the Department of Labor. Um, this was something that was created 45 years before the ADA ever um, was signed into law. 
And the history of it traces all the way back to 1945 when Congress enacted a law declaring the first week in October of each year National Employee the Physically Disabled, uh, or I'm sorry, Physically Handicapped Week. In 1962, they removed the word physically from um, the week just to acknowledge that employment needs of all types of people with different disabilities. And then in 1988, finally, we got some um, better terminology to be a little bit more inclusive with National Disability Employment Awareness Month. In the image on uh, the left of your screen, you see that um, you've got one person in yellow out of four individuals. The other three individuals are in a pink color, noting that one in four people in the United States is um, is someone who has a disability. So let's break that down just a little bit more. So the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, again, is a law that um, has a few different titles. The first title is in regards to employment. The second title is state and local government. Title three uh, refers to public accommodations, which is for private businesses. Title IV is regarding telecommunications, and Title V is the transportation and its miscellaneous provisions. So who does it apply to? So let's break this down. So the ADA really was designed to prohibit discrimination against anybody who's, qual who's a qualified individual with a disability. So that could be broken down into three different areas, individuals who have a physical mental impairment that substantially limits one or another major life activity, people who have a record of a physical or mental impairment, and individuals who are regarded to as having an impairment, whether they have an impairment or not. So it really encompasses anyone um, who may have a disability. The ADA does not include a list of covered disabilities under the law. Therefore, to really determine if you're covered under law, you need to determine if you have a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activity. We'll talk about what those major life activities are in just a moment. I did want to show you a little bit of a timeline since the ADA and what has happened since 1990 in regards to people with disabilities. So again, 1990, the ADA was signed into law um, the Rehabilitation Act and the Telecommunications Act and the Workforce Investment Act uh, followed suit in the 90s. In 1999, there were some really important Supreme Court rulings in relation to individuals with disabilities. And then finally, in 2008, there was an Amendments Act to the ADA. And you can see the other George Bush uh, signing that into law in the picture below. So. Uh, it really came full circle with the two um, George Bushes uh, in the presidency in regards to the Americans with Disabilities Act and then the Amendments Act. In 2010, there were some standards for accessible design that were released from um, the civil rights because what we've learned from 1990 to 2010, we really had a lot of um, technology that had changed and we needed to make sure that um, anyone who was trying to access things on the web um, were able to do that in a way that did not um, exclude someone from access. So just like with the Capitol crawl, with the protest, you know, we were able to see that they physically could not enter the building. But what the um, 2010 Standards for Accessible Design did was it showcased where we needed to improve on websites and other things because um, people need to be able to access those. And then there were some updates to Section 403 and Rehabilitation Act and then the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act in the uh, 2014 timeframe. So in regards to employment, why does the ADA matter? So Title I applies, again, employment. So private employers with 15 or more employees, state and local governments, um, employment agencies, labor unions, and agents of the employer, they are covered under the ADA. So employers are covered 
do they meet one of those requirements. Um, practices and activities that are covered by the employment non-discrimination requirements include all employment practices. So if an employer is um, has application procedures, all of their hiring, firing, advancement, compensation, training, conditions, all have to be accessible and designed in a way that people with disabilities can access them or at least apply for accommodations um, to be able to access them. So people who are protected from employment discrimination are anyone, um, but in regards to disability, that means that um, the person has to have that record of physical or mental impairment that substantially limits a major life activity. So some examples of those major life activities are caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, seeing, hearing, see, eating, sleeping, walking, standing, sitting, reaching, lifting, bending, speaking, breathing, learning, reading, concentrating, thinking, communicating, interacting with others, and working. There are some other bodily functions that now are included in the ADA, which include the immune system, um, special sense organs and skin, normal cell digestion, bowel, bladder, neurological, brain, respiratory, circulatory, cardio cardiovascular, endocrine, uh, lymphatic, um, mul mul muscular, skeletal, and reproductive functions. So it really encompasses so many different types of things. So does the ADA require that an applicant or employee with a disability be qualified for the position? So yes, the ADA defines a qualified to mean that the person legitimately has the skills and the education and experience or requirements of the employment uh, for the position that they are seeking. So does the employer have to give preference to an applicant with a disability? The answer is no. The employer is free to select the most qualified applicant available and make decisions based on reasons unrelated to the disability. And what limitations does the ADA impose on medical examinations and inquiries about the disability? An employer may not ask or require a job applicant to take a medical examination before making a job offer, and they cannot make any pre-offer inquiry about the disability or the nature or severity of the disability. So if a person does have a disability and they need a reasonable accommodation to their work, um, we need to talk a little bit about what reasonable means. A reasonable accommodation is really any modification or adjustment to the job or the work environment that will enable the applicant or employee to participate in the application process, perform essential job functions. Um, it also can include like an adjustment to assure that the individual has rights and privileges um, in employment equal to those employees without disabilities. So what are some of the types of accommodations that applicants or employees may need? Some examples may be um, making existing facilities readily accessible, maybe restructuring a job, modifying a work schedule, acquiring or modifying equipment that the person uses, providing um, qualified readers or interpreters, or um, modifying examinations, trainings, or other programs. So when is the employer required to make these types of reasonable accommodations? An employee is, an, excuse me, an employer is only required to accommodate a quote unquote known disability of a qualified applicant or employee. The requirement is usually triggered by a request from the individual with a disability who really knows what works for them typically and they'll be able to suggest an appropriate accommodation for their work. So again, 30 years with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Again, it was signed into law January the 26th, um, 1990. So, excuse me, not January, July 26th of 1990. And um, of course, July 26th of 2020 marked the 30 years of signing the Americans with Disabilities Act.
You can see on the image in front of you that 25.6% of adults in the United States have some type of disability. And it breaks it down by adults with disabilities, by ethnicity and race, and then types of disabilities. So some different types of disabilities are cognitive, hearing, vision, um, independent living, self-care, and ambulatory. And it breaks it down by ethnicity and race. Um, one in four black Americans uh, have a disability, one in six Hispanic Americans, one in six white Americans, uh, three in 10 Native Americans, uh, one in 10 Asian American, and one in six um, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. So communication does matter so much when we're talking to anyone, um, but importantly, when we're talking to someone or about someone who may have a disability really encourage people to use what I call person first language. This is really simple. It means putting the person before the disability. So an example of that would be a person with um, autism, a person who has blank. So again, not using inappropriate labels um, and, and trying to put the person first. One of the examples on the screen here is a person who uses a device to speak instead of a person who can't talk. So again, it's what people can do that matters. That's really the most simple yet most significant message that several leading disability and business organizations decided to use when they wanted to communicate about joining forces for the Campaign for Disability Employment. I have one short little video to share with you. So what can you do? And again, this is on the Campaign for Disability Employment website. I can solve difficult problems for a Fortune 500 company. I can run a successful business. I can manage your home improvements. I can publicize your message. I can motivate your audience. I can put my military experience up for your company. I can teach your children. I can boost your bottom line. I can help you with this. I can be a loyal and productive employee. I can't put my skills to work for your organization, but not given the opportunity. If you don't recognize my talents and ability. If you don't hire me. You don't have an open mind and a workplace that's open to everyone. You don't realize that America works best when everybody works. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? You can remember that it work. It's what people can do. It's what people can do that matters. Nearly 50 million Americans have disabilities. Capitalize on their talents with employment practices that benefit everyone. Learn more at whatcanyoudocampaign.org. So again, if you want a little bit more information about the campaigns, the What Can You Do series is on www.whatcanyoudocampaign.org. And then uh, the campaigns, of course, on the public servant announcements here, and there's a lot of different ones. And then you can celebrate um, National Disability Employment Awareness Month here. you want to learn a little bit more, these are some resources that I believe are very helpful in relation to employment and how it relates to the ADA. The Job Accommodation Network, JAN, is a very helpful resource when trying to figure out different accommodations that may work in the workplace. Of course, the ADA Special Olympics has some resources and the Americans with Disabilities Act is all located online as well. So thank you so much for joining me on um, a, just a little bit of information regarding the ADA and how it applies to increasing access and opportunity 
for all people um, who work in the United States. I hope you all have a great day and thank you again.